is up tribies and welcome back to the tribe i first want to say thank you to all of my new tribe members who have joined into this big beautiful melanated tribe if you have not joined into this big beautiful melanated tribe what are you waiting for i need you to go over here hit that red subscribe button and join into all of this tribalness that we have got going on over here and don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you can be notified every time i upload a video as you guys can probably tell by the title of this video and by the thumbnail, this video is going to be kind of like a Q&A and it's primarily going to be on how I was able to grow my hair so long. <laughs> moment at the present time my hair is about is about six inches away from my knee I know <laughs> it's about six inches away from my knee now a lot of you ask me what my hair type is and my hair type although I, I don't really like to hair type but I have just come to realization that it does help people kind of cat not categorize but kind of get a brief um idea description of what category their hair color kind of falls in i guess for lack of better terms so my hair is about 4b 4c when my hair is wet it stretches out and when it dries up completely there is no or there is a curl pattern there but it's very zigzag and it's very shrunken so from my knees my hair shrinks up about to my armpit so you guys can just kind of imagine that type of shrinkage that I get okay so how am I able to grow my hair so long so I think that when it comes to growing our hair the first thing that we want to really instill in ourselves is we want to have the healthiest hair that we can possibly have and that is the most important thing now if you are the type of person who likes to do your hair every other day in different styles and dye it and weave it and wig it and whatever it is that you want to do, that is completely fine. Okay, There is nothing wrong with doing what you want to do to your hair because it is a form of expression and it is also a form of spirituality if you make it that way. Okay, so... Don't let anybody tell you that what you're doing to your hair is not good or wrong because at the end of the day, you are the only person that can make that decision and be happy with it. So do what makes you happy in life and when it comes to your hair, period, okay? There's plenty of women who have relaxed hair that, you know, take care of their hair and love their hair. There's plenty of women who dye their hair. So, you know, let's not discriminate against each other when it comes to hair. We're already discriminated against as enough being black women <laughs> and everything so let's just keep that in mind that you know when you're looking at another video and somebody is perming their edges or doing this or doing that if that's what they want to do to their hair that's fine on the other hand do not think that you can relax in color and straighten and weave and wig it and do all of these things to your hair and get and have healthy Hair. Now, if your goal is to have healthy hair, then you need to start doing healthy things or eliminating the things that are not making your hair healthy, okay? So that's step one. Another thing to me is we are our own enemies when it comes to our hair not growing. And I say that because we often tell ourselves, even subconsciously, oh, my hair is ugly. Ugh, I don't want to deal with my hair today. Ugh, I just want to put it up and just leave, you know, not even deal with it. I just, I can't deal with it. It's too, it's too kinky or it's too nappy, which, trust me, that word still circulates around and it makes me cringe every time somebody uses it. But it's the world that we live in, right? So when you are bringing all of these negative thoughts and energies into yourself and you're telling yourself these things then the universe is only going to give it back to you and you're going to have more thoughts like that and when it comes to doing your hair oh, I don't want to do my hair today I'll just wait another week and when you start neglecting 
your hair it's because you're neglecting your thoughts about your hair okay so I've never had a ill thought about my hair and I was I was sitting and really thinking like how how am I able to grow my hair so long and then I kind of had an aha moment not only am I growing spiritually with my hair because I feel the longer that my hair gets the more that I'm grounded the more that it's grounding me and the more I feel like my consciousness is rising and I know that's hard for a lot to kind of phantom especially if you're not at that stage yet but if you are constantly giving yourself thoughts of my hair is beautiful I love my hair I love myself my hair is healthy it's flourishing I'm so grateful for it you know the more of those thoughts you're going to get back and the more that's going to manifest from within and you're going to see your hair flourish from that okay um there are times where let's say if I'm going to a concert or I'm going somewhere and I know there's going to be a lot of people around I tend to wear my hair in a head wrap only because there's so many people out there with so many different energies and your hair your hair holds a lot of energy it's receptors a lot of African tribes believe that our hair are conduits between the divine and ourselves and it's how we receive messages and the more I've gotten into this and more I've studied it the more I am coming to an a deeper awareness of it and this is what I tell you know a lot of people and a lot of my friends you know it's just that you really have to have a deep love and appreciation for your hair because the yogis believe that your hair is a gift and that your hair it rises your kundalini energy right which is like the life force in you and we need to stop treating our hair as if it's a problem and start treating it as if it's a gift because our hair is a gift my aunt once told me when I used to wear my hair and I was pregnant and she goes your hair is amazing isn't it amazing how God just knows every single strand of your hair and he's named every single one and I just looked at her like I've never heard that rendition of you know hair and strands and I'm and I was just so taken back because I was thinking that I think that is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever heard our hair is a gift and God not only knows every strand but God has named every single strand of my hair and to me my hair is a representation of my ancestors that I have never known I've never met dating back hundreds even thousands of years ago so every time I do my hair I am putting so much positive energy into my strands and I'm treating every single strand as if it's an ancestor I do not know and I have never met okay so a lot of love goes into caring for your hair don't do your hair and say oh it's just oh my god it's just not doing what I want like when you're irritated what do you get back you're gonna get that irritation of your hair not doing what you want it to do because trust me your hair holds energy and your hair can feed off your energy so there's already enough negative energy in the world so if you're giving your hair the negative energy from you it's just you're not you're not gonna see that health and in, in that that flourishment that you want to see so keep it positive keep giving your hair love and your self-love uh, self-love affirmations and just know that you're a goddess okay you're a goddess and you're divine and especially black women our hair is so different and it's so exotic and it's so beautiful and the way that it curls you know it's it's just a beautiful it's beautiful you know it's like a double helix thing going on so give your hair love so do I trim my hair no I have not trimmed my hair in about seven years the last time I trimmed it I don't know why I trimmed it actually I did it twice I did the first time I lived with my mom's when I was younger and I just went to town I don't know why I did it I don't know and then the second time I 
was like, is my hair growing? I don't know. So I just start cutting because that, well, that's what we're told to do. Your hair is not growing. Maybe your ends are messed up. So trim it and you're good. And I cut like a good four inches off. And I'm just like, why did I do that? But um, yeah, so no, I don't trim my hair. Now, I don't manipulate my hair a lot. As you guys can see, my hair is always like this. And I ain't changing it for nobody, okay? Unless I do like a twist out, which I have that video. So I'll link it below if you haven't seen that video. But I do wear my hair in twist outs every now and again but before I had my daughter I just wore my hair in twist outs literally all the time that's the only style I really wore my hair in and after my daughter you know you don't really have time like you used to uh, pre-baby so you do what you can and now I just primarily wear my hair in twists I don't do too much I don't manipulate it a lot I don't you know put tons and tons of different products in it I'm not a product junkie I just it's just not me and that's another thing. When it comes to your hair, you have to be proud. You have to you have to have a self uh, a sense of of self awareness, and your not all your family is going to agree, and not all your family is gonna like it, or your friends or your your spouses should be the one that's like you're beautiful no matter what. But everybody is not gonna like it. And everybody's not gonna accept it. But that is okay. That is a part of loving yourself. And not caring what another person thinks and I think that's a thing that I have I could care less about what anybody thinks of me or about my hair is what I'm saying okay so I'm me I've always been me and I'm always gonna be me and that's just it I don't like changing for people and you shouldn't have to change for anybody you should just be yourself authentically and do the things that make you happy and rock your natural hair with confidence because at the end of the day it's your hair it's hair that is unbothered untouched and it's something that grows directly from your body and you know it's it's a part of you it's a part of who you are so I'm a big believer on just leaving it how it is and accepting it now if you want to like I said if you want to do whatever you want to your hair that's fine but but do those things while still knowing that who you are organically is beautiful. So that's my message. So no, I do not trim my hair. <laughs> so how do I keep my hair so thick? How do I get my hair thick? Now, my hair has always been thick. I've always had really thick hair since I was younger. I remember my grandmother was brushing my hair one day. And you guys remember like those wooden brushes, like straight up wood, like with bristles, but like it's wood. She was brushing my hair and that wooden brush snapped right in half. And I was like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so she couldn't get all my hair in a ponytail. So all this was like poofed and then I was kind of like a troll. And then it was like the, the hair tie, which is like right here. And I was just like, Lord. And like the bun was like, up. I was like, oh my God, do I really have to go to school like this? yeah so my hair was so thick when I was younger and it is still so thick now your density is something that is genetic okay now not all factors of your hair is genetics but let's go over a couple so the density of your hair tends to be genetic now while my mother's hair is not as I think maybe her hair is, for, for her head, her head is really small, and her face is really small. My mother looks like Somalian or Ethiopian, so that's my mom, that's how my mom looks, okay? And her hair is very wavy and like black, and her texture is very like 3BC-ish, like that's, that's how her texture is, very shiny and black. I forgot where I was going with this. So I did get a little bit of that density from my mother. My father has locks. He's had locks since I was born, so 30 plus years, whatever. And his locks are past his knees now, maybe to the ground. I have no idea. He wears them wrapped up. And I've also learned from my father growing up that you don't let nobody touch your hair. People carry energies in their hands and letting people touch your hair, that's just, you don't do that. So thanks for that. <laughs> um, so density is a little, you know, correlated to genetics. Now, there are a lot of factors 
that determine your hair um, length and thickness and you know other things and that is your internal factor so if your body is not at e uh, equilibrium which is if your body isn't um, balance basically if you're if you're not balanced if you have deficiencies then you're going to see that in your hair your hair is going to start thinning and it's not that your hair is thin it's just that you have internal um, deficiencies and different things going on that is correlating your hair to be thin now there's also external factors which are the things that you're doing to your hair how you're manipulating your hair if you're um you know perming your hair relaxing your hair whatever you want to call it yeah, the environment that you're in, the pollution, the the weather, it's so many different things that factor in to your hair. Now, there is a thing called terminal length, and terminal length is the longest your hair will get if your hair is untouched and unbothered. Now, if you don't unbother your hair, then how are you supposed to know what your terminal length is? And this is why locks, people with locks who grow so long, because they're keeping every single strand of their hair and their hair is literally untouched and unbothered okay so they're able to see all of their length and that's why locks grow so long now I'm typically using the same method as people with locks I'm basically twisting my hair up and I'm really not doing anything to it and I may go in every once in a while like every couple of days and I retwist the twists that are starting to lock up because my hair do lock up fairly quickly so I do go in and I retwist certain twists that looks really really frizzy and that's how I know that they're locking up or my twists will look like they're budding if you know what budding is it's what your lock started doing uh, like when when it's like matting together so if little pieces are starting to like bud out then I know that I need to retwist their hair so basically I'm not doing anything to my hair I'm really not doing too much to my hair and a lot of people say oh I don't have all that time well, it's, it's really not a lot of time that I spend. Now, when I do spend the time, I put a lot of love into my hair, okay? I'm not doing it in a rush, so you don't want to do your hair in a rush. You don't want to do your hair while you're angry. Don't do your hair while you're angry. And you want to do your hair when you have time to give some time back to yourself. Now, I have a four-year-old. Well, she, she'll be four, so she's three. Let's just say three, okay? I don't want to rush it, but <laughs> I have a three-year-old. And my daughter is attached at the hip. Like right now, I'm recording because she's with my mom. But she's attached at the hip. And I literally do not have time to go and do my hair while she's here because she just wants mommy. So it's really not a lot of time that I spend on my hair. But the time that I do spend, I spend it in basking in the love and the glory and the gratitude that I do have for my hair. So that is another thing to think about. Having healthy hair is not hard, but it does require discipline and it does require you to embrace and love what you have on your head, okay? And that's just period. If you don't have a love for self, and I mean like a deep soul connection with yourself, then you're not going to manifest what you want you're not going to manifest that beautiful head of hair that you want and i am all about very unconditional unconven unconventional ways of growing my hair and very unconventional ways of giving myself love and just embasking myself in peace and spirituality as much as i possibly can and i think that has really helped me along the way to really grow my hair because it's not a vanity thing for me. It's, it's not just, well, it's not just vanity. Like, I love my hair. I know my hair is beautiful. I could be out in these streets wearing my hair out and long and flowy and having everybody look and being like, ooh, oh my God, and coming up to me. But that's not what I'm going for. I'm going more of for a self-love and a self-understanding and a spiritual awareness and um, just a gratitude for my hair. I, I feel like my hair is a part of who I am and it's a part of my strength and when I'm twisting those strands together and they're forming a union it just does something to me that it just makes me feel so good it's just like tribe up and that is why I primarily named my channel indigenous strands because I feel like the more that I'm getting to my natural hair journey the more that it's connecting me 
to certain traditions that our ancestors once had and passed down and things that my grandmother passed down to me that was very indigenous to my family and where my family comes from and different things like that. And I love every single strand of my hair. Every single strand of my hair is beautiful to me and I never leave one out. And that's how we need to start thinking. We need to start really loving and just embracing, just really, really embrace your hair because your hair is just a representation of many, many, many generations that took to make you. So I'm very thankful and grateful of it in that sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. If you didn't, give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. No, join into the tribe. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video.